you know, trying to help guide y'all. So the third dimension is, you know, left, right, up, down, forward, back. You know, we have freedom to move among these dimensions. You know, we have depth, which is the third dimension. The second dimension, you know, two dimensions is just a plane, but we have depth here in the third dimension. The fourth dimension is time. There is no limitation upon time within the fourth dimension. You know what I mean? And then the fifth dimension is a uh, space. There's no limitation upon space. That is why that is why the two sides seem like an illusion. But the closer you get to the fifth dimension, the closer those two sides get uh, eliminating the illusion of separation because we feel like we're separated because there's space between us. But if space no longer exists, there is no separation. And so then we can understand more deeply the oneness that we all cont contain cont together. You know, the interconnectedness that we all experience. That's why the deeper you go into the mind, the more connected you can be with someone. You can perceive their thoughts. You can receive their thoughts. You know, throw, throw a three in the chat if you ever, uh, throw a three in the chat if you ever kind of th thought of somebody and they started calling. Or you looked at your phone and, and thought about hitting somebody up and they already texted you. Or maybe, or maybe you saw, you were singing a song in your head and then somebody else starts singing it out loud at the same spot where you were singing it. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So these are intuitive thoughts, right? When you are, when you connect, uh, have a stronger relationship with your subconscious mind, you can have these more intuitive experiences. You know what I mean? I'm sure all of you can think of different intuitive experiences that you have had. You know what I mean? Look at that. Look at that. We, we were just sitting here at five and now we run it up to a hundred just like that. Hey, hit the like, man. Let them know. Let them know we got some knowledge going in here, man. Hit the like, share it with somebody because, hey, my, anybody who's new new here, you're going to find out real quick. We about some knowledge. I ain't just up here talking just to talk. I'm going to give you some practical ways in order to apply these different metaphysical principles and concepts in order for you to have experiences for yourself so you can know what is true because you don't want to be just believing anything I say. Please don't believe anything you see up here. Don't believe anything you hear come out of here. Don't believe none. You're going to do yourself a disservice if, if you just believe me. You know what I mean? But instead, find a way to incorporate into your own life so you can know what is true or not, you know, so that you can know whether something is bullshit. Because I might just be up here bullshit just to sound good, just to get some likes up, you know what I mean? For for whatever reason that does. But, uh, but you know, in reality, I just like the likes because it helps the out tell the algorithm, hey, get some people in here, man, so we can, we can all grow together, man. Let's grow. Hey, two cats in a cup share the live. They get a follow. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, you know what I mean? If you like what you hear, man, hit the like. You know I mean, every time you hear something that resonate with you, hit that like like 10 times. You know what I mean, also here, I'm going to do this because I got I got all type of courses and everything I did the other day in life. If we get if we get to 10,000, if we get to 25,000, that's what we did. For every 25,000 in likes that we hit, I'm going to give away a course to somebody. I'm going to give free access to one course, whatever they pick. For every 10,000 likes we or 25,000 likes we get, we're going we gonna to give out a free course. It didn't take very long last time. We were sitting at like 8,000, and I said that, and we got to 25,000 in like 10 minutes. What an egoist. <laughs> Everybody got the ego, bro. Everybody got the ego. You got to learn how to master your ego. You know what I mean? Your ego is your motivating force. Do you know what the ego is? You know what I mean? In the Bible, the ego was represented by uh, the snake, Satan. And the devil and the dragon in the book of Revelation. This is the evolution of the ego, right? So if Jesus was sitting there, you know, he was sitting there praying and everything right before he went onto the cross. And then Satan came in and started tempting him and told him all this stuff. Jesus, Jesus could have saved us all some trouble, destroyed him, killed him right there, right? But he didn't. He could have saved us all some trouble. He could have saved himself some trouble if he would have just destroyed him right there. But he didn't. He could have sent him away. He didn't send him away. He said, get behind me because the ego is supposed to be in the back, pushing you forward to where you are leading the way and pointing where you want to go. You know what I mean? But for most of us, the ego is out front leading the way. So we have different ego reactions. You know what I mean? Somebody, somebody uh, says something and, oh, you, oh, no, 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 that ain't happening to me. I mean, you drive down the road, somebody cuts you off. Oh, you better not. You know what I mean? You have that ego reaction. That's what gets you into trouble because you're allowing the ego to dictate where you go, what you do, how you think. You know what I mean? And who, who, all, who all feels they have a trouble with the ego? You know what I mean? Throw an throw a E in the chat. Throw an E in the chat if you have trouble with the ego. Everybody in here, throw an E in the chat if you have trouble with the ego. R. R. <laughs> I guess you don't have no trouble with the ego. No, I'm playing. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. So 
here's here's an exercise that I want you to do. Who wants to learn how to master their ego? Maybe we should put that. Type master in the chat if you want to learn how to master your ego. Everybody in here, type master in the chat if you want to learn how to master your ego. Master, 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 master. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. So here's what I want you to do. Who, If you're serious, if you're serious, you're going to start doing this starting tomorrow. If you're serious about wanting to master your ego, you're going to start doing this tomorrow. Take a, take a dollar bill, go to the bank, and get you 100 pennies, right? Don't, don't, see, look, already you quite, already your ego's, what, what? <laughs> already ego's reacting, ego's in control, already. You got to, you, this is this exercise, I'm telling you, this exercise is going to teach you to master the ego. Go to the bank, have a $1 bill, and ask the teller for 100 pennies. Take your 100 pennies, go home. Get you a bowl, put the bowl or two bowls, put one one bowl each in the furthest parts of either your home or your apartment or wherever you're living. Even if you only have a room, put it in one side of the room, the other side of the room. That's all you know. If you live with somebody and you can't do that, if you live with your parents or something, you can't do that. Just put it in each side of your room and take your bowl, your hundred pennies and put them inside of the bowl. Right. in one of the bowls and leave the other bowl empty. Penny's got abolished here, so I'm going to do nickels. Okay, get $5 and do 100 nickels. There you go. Okay, and then what you're going to do is every single morning, wake up 10 minutes early. Whatever time you normally wake up now, wake up 10 minutes earlier and incorporate into your morning routine 10 minutes where you go over and grab one penny or one nickel out of the um, out of the one bowl and you walk all the way to the other side of the room and you drop a penny, you drop that one penny into the other bowl. And then you walk back, pick up the penny, walk back, drop a penny. And you do that for a hundred times. One pe- pick up the penny over here and drop it over there and do that every single morning. I'm telling you, man, why, you ain't even going to be halfway through and your, your ego going to be screaming, what are we doing? Why were we listening to that guy? That guy don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> I mean, your ego, why are you doing this? This is dumb. This ain't even make no sense. That ego going to be fighting, boy. It going to be fighting. <laughs> and you got to you got to learn to master. This is going to teach you to master your ego because every time that comes up and you push it to the side and keep going, that's you continuing to tell the ego, no, I'm in control. I'm dictating what we do. And that's also going to strengthen your willpower. I'm telling you, man, this works. Do it every single day for 90 days. Then come back and report. Come back and report. Time to sit with that ego. Yeah, spend some time with it. Let it rear its head and roar in your face and, and, and keep on going. Don't, don't give in. If you give in, you're going to continue to be a slave to the ego. You got to learn how to master the ego. Do this exercise. I'm telling you. Put in, put in the praying hands if you're going to do this exercise for 90 days. Put in the praying hands if you're going to make a conscious choice right now. Activate your willpower. Make a conscious choice right now. I came late to this live. What are we supposed to do for 90 days? Okay, we're, we are um, uh, learning how to master the ego. So get you 100 pennies, put it in a bowl uh, uh, on one side of the room, and then on the other side of the room, have an empty bowl. And every morning, you pick up one penny, drop it in. Pick up one penny, drop it in. You just transfer the pennies. And then the next morning, you got them in this bowl. You pick up the penny, one penny at a time from there, and take it back to the other bowl. Beautiful. I'm so glad all these people are doing it, man. This gonna be this is gonna be major, man. If all of y'all do this for 90 days, y'all gonna transform your families, your communities, just because of how much you're gonna transform. Because this is gonna be powerful. This is gonna be powerful. You know, I need to make a video on this and, and share it with people because I don't be uh uh I don't think I've made too many videos on the ego. Pennies, you say. Exactly. Yeah, pennies. <laughs> Patience and ego. I'm telling you, this is going this to have you mastering the ego for real. For re- Exactly, for real. <laughs> for real. It's the real deal, man. But you got to put in the work, man. Listen, sitting, sitting back listening isn't going to do nothing for you. You know what I mean? Sitting here scrolling and watching isn't going to do nothing for you. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, thinking about it, trying it a couple times, that ain't going to do nothing for you. It's time to invest in yourself. I'm telling you. You got to invest in yourself. You got to spend time with yourself. You got to put in the work. No, ain't nobody else going to do it for you. You, you got to make it happen. You got to make it happen. Ain't nobody else going to do it for you. So whoever that was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was dude who came in and said, I'm an egoist. I am an egoist. I am an egoist. I, I love the ego. So like I said, when he said that, 
hey, we already at 2.8 thousand. If we get if we get 25 thousand, I'm gonna give 25 thousand likes. I'm gonna give somebody in the chat uh, a free access to one of my courses. Jesus loves you. I love Jesus. Jesus is your own human imagination. Boy, let them know. Let them know. Jesus is your own human imagination. I mean, do you know Jesus? Do you do you know Jesus? Jesus is your own human imagination. Also, Joshua. I mean, as well, your own human imagination. Let them know. You believe in karma. I understand. I understand karma as far as believing in it. Um, yes, I understand karma. I know karma. Karma is uh, one half of your soul's purpose. You know, Dharma is the other half. Do you know Dharma? Believe versus know. Exactly. Create an experience for yourself because believing something and knowing something, the difference is experience. So what experience are you creating for yourself? What does your course consist of? I'm new here. Okay. Well, we got, first we got the Dream Interpretation Masterclass. Um, so that's going to teach you the structure of the mind, what we were just looking at a second ago. The first, I spent like an hour and a half breaking all of this down, every aspect of this, so you can better understand your consciousness, your mind, your soul, your spirit, the connection between the three, the subconscious, conscious, superconscious. And then in the second week, we break down dreams all the way, what dreams are, why we dream, where we dream, how we dream, how to record your dreams, how to remember more dreams. And then uh, the language that dreams are in, how that language is structured, form and function, you know, which is the universal language of the mind, which is the language of images, because we dream in images. Why? Because when we go into the subconscious mind and dream, we are ex uh, observing all of the things within our mind. We're exploring our inner world. All day, we're exploring our outer world and all night, we're exploring our inner world. But we think in images. That's what a thought is. A thought is an image. Like if I say everybody to think of a balloon. Everybody think of a balloon real quick. Now everybody type in the chat what color the balloon was. You can throw in the chat what color the balloon was because you think in images. When you thought of that balloon, you could see it in your mind. Right? Red. There you go. Red, red, red. Red is always the most one. Blue is the second most. But red is the most common by far. Red balloon. Boom. There we go. And so when we think, when we understand what these images represent, then we can know what our dreams are telling us. So we get into that. Then the third lesson within the dream interpretation masterclass goes into uh, applying this language to holy scriptures. And we use as an example, the first 10 verses of Genesis one in the Bible. So the, so the creation story in the Bible, right? And so when you then apply that language to the first 10 verses, you will identify and easily see that it's laying out the structure of the mind, the creation, the creation of your consciousness. You know what I mean? Our consciousness is well beyond all of these. The mind, the mind right here is just a tool for, for, uh, for our consciousness to, to uh, know itself. These vehicles, the spirit, the soul, the physical body, these are just vehicles, just like your, your Toyota or your uh, Honda or your Ford are just vehicles for you to use to be able to traverse the roadways. This physical vehicle is just a vehicle for you to traverse the physical reality. The soul is a vehicle for you to traverse the fourth dimension. The spirit is a vehicle for you to traverse the fifth dimension. Your consciousness is beyond all of that. And so the first 10 verses of the Bible lay all this out. The firmament. This is the firmament right here. I'm telling you, man. It goes deep. And so then in the, four, in the next lesson, we to then take that same language and decode movies with it. You know what I mean? The the uh whoever heard, whoever heard the movie, the story of Aladdin, who's familiar with the story of Aladdin? This is one of my favorite stories. Put a uh, put a little genie lamp or something. In, <laughs> put a little genie lamp in the chat if you heard of Aladdin. Okay, we got a five. Let me see. I wonder if there is a genie lamp on here. Genie. Hey. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna throw the genie in there. Boom. I heard of Aladdin. Genie. <laughs> hey. Larry found it. Exactly. Okay. So. Open says me, Gen the genie. We all have a genie. That genie lamp, anybody know what that genie lamp is? What part of the body is the genie lamp? What part of the body is the genie lamp? Gen, okay, come on. What part of the body is the genie lamp? The brain, That that's very close. What part of the brain? The pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is the genie lamp. And so we all have that genie lamp. If you rub on it, if you stimulate it, then you will activate it. 
If you create friction, which will create heat, if you stimulate the pituitary gland, you will activate it. Not the pineal gland. The pineal gland is something different for some for a different purpose. The pituitary gland, right? And so when you do that, then and and where and also where was where did Aladdin find the genie lamp? Where did Aladdin find the genie lamp? It was it was first he had to go within, right? He had to go within the cave, so he had to go within. The earth represents a hey, sacred oil. What you know about the sacred oil, the sacred secretion? <laughs> but uh, you had to go into the earth, right? So the earth represents subconscious mind. So he had you have to go within in order to find this. What leads you there? We was talking about the ego. The ego. Jafar represents the ego. That's why he turns into the snake. I told you in the in the book in the in the Bible, the snake, Satan. And uh, the dragon and Revelation all represent the evolution of the ego. The snake represents the ego. In the story of Aladdin, the snake represents the ego. That's why he turned into the snake, Aladdin, Jafar. But Jafar leads him there. So the ego leads you there, right? And so your ego of wanting to, I want to know myself. I want to be someone who understands who I am. I want to know myself. So I'm going to go within. I'm going to connect with my soul. I'm a, you know, your soul is your own soul, mate. Start dating yourself. Y'all don't date yourself enough. Take yourself on a date. I ain't talking about go to the movies by yourself and a dinner by yourself. I'm talking about sit down, spend time with yourself, talk with yourself, communicate with yourself, connect with yourself, put your attention on yourself, on your body, on your mind, on your thoughts, on your emotions. You know what I mean? And so lead yourself, go within. But once he once he starts going in the cave, what happens? What does he see? The deeper he goes, what does he start seeing? And then the deeper he goes beyond that, he starts seeing more of it. What does he start? What does Aladdin start seeing the deeper into the cave he goes? I know I ain't the only one to see in the movie. <laughs> what did Aladdin start seeing in the cave when he started going in the cave? Gold. Gold. What else? Rubies, right? Treasure. Value. Valuable items. So the deeper inside of your own subconscious mind, the deeper you the deeper you go within yourself, the more value, the more aware you are going to become of your own value. You're going to understand how valuable and worthy you are. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm telling you it's in there. This is the this is the universal language of the mind. You know what I mean? The language that our dreams are in. Anybody can know this and you can decode all of this. We decode in Aladdin real quick, right? Hey, appreciate the love. Thank you. And so, but here's, here's a, here's, if y'all want to see a gem, here's a gem for you. That ain't nothing. Where was, where was the, where was the, uh, was the lamp at? Remember the lamp, the genie lamp is the pituitary gland. Where was the lamp at? Hey, I appreciate all the love y'all. Thank you. Where was the lamp at? Where did, when he found the lamp, where was it? He, he couldn't just pick it up. He had to do something to get to it. Right. Cause where was it? It wasn't buried. It wasn't buried. It was in the cave. It was in the cave of wonders, way up high and way up high, right? Because it was sitting on top of a pillar. It was, there was a pillar with the lamp on top of it, high on a pedestal. Exactly. Exactly. Where does your pituitary gland sit? It's the center of your brain and the brain sits on top of the pedestal of your spine. The brain sits on top of the pedestal of your spine. I'm telling you, this they they laying it out right in front of you. I ain't making this shit up. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just interpreting the universal language of the mind. That's it. That's it. You know what I mean? The Bible has the same thing. Jacob, the story of Jacob, Jacob's ladder. He saw a vision of angels ascending and descending a ladder. This is Jacob's ladder. You know what I mean? This this right here is Jacob's ladder. And when he awoke, he called that place pineal. You know what I mean? The pineal gland, because the pineal gland is all about connecting to the divine. You know what I mean? The genie, the pituitary gland is the genie, all about your mental perception, helping you to manifest your reality. But the pineal is all about connecting to the divine. That's what he dreamt about, the pineal gland. And the pineal gland is where? Also in the brain, which sits on top of the spine. And when he awoke from that dream, he took a pillar and put a stone upon, on top of it. And then he blessed it with oil, which was that sacred secretion somebody else in here was talking about. They know. But anyway, so it's, this is more than just, you know, the story of Aladdin. But anyways, once he gets that lamp, what happens then? Once he once he rubs it, right, and stimulates the pituitary gland, which here's how you can stimulate your pituitary gland. Who wants to know how to stimulate their pituitary gland? I told y'all, I don't just drop knowledge. I'm, I'm giving you practical ways to implement it into your life. 
who wants to know who wants to know how to stimulate the pituitary gland real quick? Throw a uh, me, me. Okay, yeah, throw me in there. Who cares? Okay. So if you go, mm, give yourself some hums, and and try different frequencies until you feel it stimulating the center of your brain. Mm, press your lips. Mm, there it is. Mm, that's one way. So I would I would suggest do this. Do this for five minutes every day. Do this for five minutes every day. Mm, Sometimes you got to press your tongue in a certain way, but you got you got to feel that vibration, get that vibration in the right spot. Mm. I mean, you can plug your ears. You don't have to, though, but do that regularly, right? And that's going to stimulate your pituitary gland. So when Aladdin stimulated that pituitary gland, what happened? The genie popped out. Our own inner power of creation and manifestation because genie can do anything right the genie can do anything now in the story of latin you only get three wishes but why because three represents creation three represents creation in every culture three represents creation right the three sides right here for the mind creation the three divisions of mind conscious mind subconscious mind superconscious mind right three represents creation and so when we tap into that, then we can learn how to create for ourselves. And now that we do have a more powerful ability to create, the struggle, what's, what's the struggle with Jafar? You know what I mean? The struggle with the ego. The ego wants to be back in control. The ego wants to control this. Oh, no, no, no. We manifest in power. We manifest in riches. You know what I mean? The ego wants to overthrow the sultan. The sultan is the subconscious mind. The uh, See, so hold on before I get into that. The conscious mind is aggressive, right? The thoughts in your conscious mind, they're just coming in every day, no matter what you want. They're coming in and they ain't going away. You know what I mean? So it's aggressive, masculine, right? The subconscious mind is receptive, feminine. You have to be more receptive to receive the thoughts of the subconscious mind, right? And so when you do that, you know, the, the, so Jasmine is, is the subconscious mind in the story of Aladdin. She represents the subconscious mind. And he's always trying to connect with the sub subconscious mind. You know what I mean? Jafar, the ego, he wants to have power. But Aladdin, he is the person who wants to connect more with their inner self. Wants to connect with their soul. He wants to date his soul. He wants to marry himself. He wants to be committed to himself. Right? That is what's motivating him throughout all of this. Okay? And then the father is the superconscious mind. The authority. The authority over all of the land is your inner authority which is your superconscious mind, is your inner authority, right? And so, and so anyways, we can go even further and keep, continue to go deeper into that, but that's pretty much the gist of it. So, <laughs> you can decode different movies. In the, in the Dream Interpretation Masterclass, which is what the lady was asking, what are these courses that you offer? In the Dream Interpretation Masterclass, like I said, we talk about um, you know, the structure of the mind in the first lesson, and then what dreams are and how to interpret dreams, and then applying that message into... The um into how to decode holy scriptures, and then the fourth lesson is applying it into decoding movies, particular movies. And in, in that, we go like the movie Ad Astra with Brad Pitt is only like an hour and a half long. The video I do breaking it all down with so much symbology is, is two hours long. I'm telling you, man, you ain't gonna be able to see this movie again. If you've seen this movie, you ain't gonna be able to ever see it again the same. Like, uh, it got a lot of bad reviews. Because in a lot of the movies that I like, a lot of the movies that have so, such knowledge do come with bad reviews because it don't make sense to a lot of people. It's like, why did they put that in there? That didn't make no sense. That didn't, the movie didn't need that at all. And if you're watching it just cinematically for the story, you think the same thing. Like, that was dumb. Ad Astra is the name. Ad Astra. A-D-A-S-T-R-A. -A. Add into Astra. The astral. Into the astral. Because that's what that whole movie is about. It's deep, going deeper within the self. 
in dreams and everything. So that's why I chose that movie. I mean, it's a powerful movie, but it's an even more powerful message when you decode it. And then the fifth lesson in the Dream Interpretation Masterclass. Yeah, add Astro with a space, though. The fifth lesson in the Dream Interpretation Masterclass is getting into incubated dreams, uh, precognitive dreams, visitation dreams, um, a- uh, lucid dreams, and everything like that. So, so yeah, so if we get to 25000 we only need 10000 more. If we get 25000 you, you can get some, somebody in here is going to get that course for free or a different course. You know, we also have um, the Keys to Success course. If you want to learn how to lucid dream, who in here wants to learn how to lucid dream? Throw a lucid in the chat. Throw a lucid in the chat if you want to learn how to lucid dream. Speaking of which, speaking of which, today, today is the first day my dream journal got published. Today is the first day the dream journal got published. Hey man, where are we at? Oh well, it ain't working. <laughs> Me, lucid. Okay. So if you want to become lucid. You have to strengthen your concentration, your willpower. Otherwise, you will not have any control over the lucidity. You won't have any control. If you end up lucid and you end up getting somewhere that you don't want to be anymore and you want to go back to somewhere else or you want to go back to your body, you have to have a strong level of concentration and willpower in order to make that happen. You know what I mean? If you want to manifest something and cause something to rise up, then you have to have a love you know, concentration and willpower to make that happen. But yeah, uh, fresh on Amazon today, the dream journal right here, a key to lucidity. Um, it's, it's more than just a dream journal. It's going to have uh, three chapters in the beginning about um, lucid dreaming and um, and how to record your dreams and how to start remembering dreams and go deep with your dreams. And then in the very end, in the very back, I'm, it's got it's already got 370 symbols with of a glossary of symbols for you to utilize as a tool to then start interpreting your dreams for yourself. Uh, so a lot of these symbols that I'm in here talking about, it's all in there. Thank you. I appreciate it. I said, congratulations. I appreciate all the love, everybody. I thank you for that. But um, but this is going to be a key. It will be a tool for you. So if you want a lucid dream, this will also help you out with that. But um, uh, let me see. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah. The Keys to Success course. So the Keys to Success course teaches you how to strengthen your concentration, how to strengthen your willpower. You know what I mean? If you want to learn how to astral travel and actually lucid dream, like where you put your body to sleep and and then you know keep your mind awake and just go straight into a dream, that's definitely going to take concentration and willpower. And I teach that, and I got a book called Lucid coming out on that as well. Um, so that'll be out shortly uh, by the end, by the end of summer. That'll be out. So um, so yeah. So you know, Keys to Success course will teach you how to strengthen your concentration and your willpower. And the visualization uh, course that I already gave to the mentees. Um, is being edited now to be added into that so that you will, in the Keys of Success course, learn how to strengthen your concentration, learn how to strengthen your willpower, and learn how to strengthen your um, uh, visualization ability, which is your ability to control your imagination. What about reality transferring or shifting? Exactly. That's what all that is. You know, a lot of people were talking about manifestation and that got old. So people talked about uh, uh, shifting realities and that's starting to get old. And so, and so now people are talking about reality transferring transferring to alternate realities so there is just the this one reality that is it it's this present moment we are we are locked in this present moment in, in this third dimension so as far as this third dimension goes there's only one i'm i don't want to talk about that but uh, i mean there's only one reality but everything is real but within this third dimension there's only one reality the present moment but the present moment has infinite possibilities for you to make and create and so what you, what you shift into and manifest for yourself, because the present moment is ever evolving. So what you turn, what you cause it to evolve into is going to be what people are calling, you know, timeline shifting, timeline jumping and all of that. But it is very simple. It is very ancient. It's nothing new. You know what I mean? It ain't like, it ain't like people talking about, oh, there's new timelines available. There's like, I saw a video today. There's new portal. There's a new portal opening. Make sure you take advantage of it. Like, man, come on. Yes, there are different kind of like energy portals, but you can manifest, you know, it's like, because they're, they're, they're talking about, this is the greatest time to manifest. What? No, you always, you always a powerful manifester. You always manifest it. Everybody, we, our thoughts create our reality. You know what I mean, there's a universal law. You know what I mean? Thought is cause. That's a universal law. That means universal. That means for everyone, everywhere, all the time, your thoughts create your reality. So you can't become no more powerful of a manifester than you are today. Now you can gain more control, but you can't get, you ain't going to be no more powerful. 
And the more control you have over what you manifest will make it appear like you have more power. Just like just like I was talking about with value earlier, self-value and self-worth. Your self-value and self-worth is tremendous no matter what you do. So there's nothing you can do to... um. Hey, we already at 22,000. <laughs> it said 22.2. Two, two two. <laughs> we already at 22,000. Nice. So we're going to hit that 25. Okay, we're going to hit 25, and I'm going to give a course away to one person. But if we hit 100,000, I'm going to give a course away to five people. Actually, I don't know if we're going to hit 100,000 because I got to leave in, uh, in 45 minutes. <laughs> Actually, that's probably plenty of time. We hit 100,000, five people are going to get a free course. Five people. Bro, I'm tapping. Let's go. Okay. Hey, man, is manifesting it, boy. Hey, the other day when I did it, this one dude, he manifested it. He manifested it. I said just one person. It wasn't him. He said, man, it was supposed to be me. And then everybody was saying stuff, and, and they kept on tapping, and we was almost to 50000 I was like, okay, we get to 50000 We're going to do it. Man, we didn't quite get there because I, I was like, you know what? I'm not waiting for this because I got to go. <laughs> so I just went ahead and gave it away. Boom. He was one of the names. Because he was like, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. But I like this just because it brings more people in so that more people can get more knowledge. Um, but another course that is available is the is the Life Force. And um, who, who, all, who all here wants to have more energy? Like, so Life Force Energy and, and Chakras is what the other course is. Hey, hey, look at this. Speaking of which, had a dream of the second chakra seal on my forehead and a white, gold, yellow laser penetrating the third. The third eye. Nice. Nice. That's a beautiful dream. That's a beautiful dream. So with, with that dream, that is ident evident that not only are you elevating your energy and, and you are raising your mental perception, which is what the brow chakra is, the third eye, but you are also increasing your concentration. That's what the laser is going to be. You have more, far more awareness. You are expanding your awareness because of how, the level of concentration that you are cultivating. So whatever it is you are doing, make sure you keep doing it. Hey, we had 26,000. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, 26,000. So somebody's going to get a course, right? Okay, so uh, how we did it last? We'll do it how we did it last time. Just spam three. The number three, just spam three in the chat. You know what I mean, just... Put a three in the chat. I'm going I'm to I'm look away and tap somebody. And whoever I tap the hit a three is going gonna, is gonna to get it. So keep putting the threes in. Keep like, don't just put one. You know what I mean? Keep putting, every three is your entry. Every three is your entry. Keep putting threes in. Three, 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 three. All right, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to do it in five, four, three, two, one. Boom. Oh, oh. Juicy kid. Juicy Kid just won. Okay, Juicy Kid. I'm going to follow you, Juicy Kid. Go ahead and send me a message, Juicy Kid. Send me a message and um, and let me know. Uh, go ahead and go to, my, go to my page at the very top and, and click on all the different courses that are there. And let me know which one you want access to. I'll give you free access to it. So send me a message and let me know. But yeah, so to everybody else, yeah, congratulations to everybody else. I mean, you can still get it. You know what I mean? To have, since all y'all here, you can use the promo code TikTok. That gives you 50% off. <laughs> I'll give you half. I don't care about the money. You know what I mean? I'm, I got a job. I sell mortgage. You know what I mean? I got a job. I make plenty of money. I, don't, I ain't worried about the money. You know what I mean? You know, I'm, I, the money is just to help you. Hey, 100,000, y'all. Hey, five people. We get to 100,000. Five people going to get a free access to the course. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. We get into 100. Okay. Okay. We get into 100. Hey, it might it might increase to more than more than five if we actually make it to a hundred. I don't know. We'll see how the vibes go. All right. <laughs> but one thing I won't do is, oh, we at ninety five thousand. I gotta go. See y'all. <laughs> hey, that'd be dirty if somebody did that. That'd be dirty. <laughs> hey, I ain't getting no work done. I did this to while I did some work. I ain't getting no work done. I'm having too much fun. It's fun. All right. But anyways, what other dreams we all got? What other dreams y'all got? What other que question? Boom. What other questions y'all got? Boom. First, sorry, there's a question. Okay. Why can't I remember what happened after staring at my body when astral projecting? Ah, that's a beautiful question. That's a beautiful question. So when you're practicing, who all, who all has had a, a successful astral projection? Who all has had a, put AP in the chat if you've had a successful astral projection? Put a me in the chat. If you haven't, but you want to know how to astral project, 
or if you have and you want to know how to consciously do it with control at, at any time. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. So, um, I have, actually, I have a series right now on astral projections. So maybe that's why you came in here and found me or something and asked me that question. But I have a, a series of videos right now on astral projections. So as far as how to do it, stick with this series and continue working with it. Uh, the number one thing, the number one thing that's going to determine your success with astral projection is concentration and willpower. Concentration and willpower. Because it's going to take concentration and willpower in order to get out of your body. There's different safeguards and things. Uh, and, and checks that happen, different checks point, checkpoints you have to get through in order to be successful with astral projection. And you can't get through it without concentration and willpower because that's a safeguard. Because if you get if you do get out and you start moving around the astral plane without any level of concentration and willpower, you, you're going to you're going to start, you know, creating experiences for yourself that are unpleasant because you have an undisciplined mind. So you're going to start, you know, you're going to get into a you're going to get afraid and then you're going to. And so. You are where your attention is. So if you become afraid, then you move to a, a place of, a, if you move into a, a fearful state of mind, then you're going to go to a place that manifests fear, things that you're afraid of. Because in the universal language of mind, places represent your state of mind. So every when you're actually projecting, the place that you are at is determined by your state of mind. So if you want to shift to a different place, you have to shift your mind there. And if you have no level of concentration willpower, you'll have no ability to shift your mind. How do you create that level of concentration? The Keys to Success course. Go to the Keys to Success course. It's going to guide you through on how to, you got to invest in yourself. You got to put in the work. It's going to guide you how to strengthen your concentration willpower. But yeah, you got to invest in yourself. It's going to teach you how to do that, how to put in the work to make that happen. But, um, or just, I mean, you can just, you can just search concentration exercise. But the one in there is is a very ancient tech exercise that is very specific. I would suggest doing the candle flame because that has a high level of other pro additional properties that are going to have far more metaphysical effects for you, uh, for your progression and growth uh, than the other. I, I suggest some people are kind of opposed to that. Um, and so I have other things that you can focus your attention on other than a flame, if that's if that's for you. But um, but that's what's that's going to happen. But as far as to your question, though. Um, why couldn't you remember when you were standing over your body, when you actually project your consciousness, you actually have a conscious double, right? So you'll, when you very first happen, you can be aware of being in your body with your eyes closed. And you'll also be aware of being standing over your body in the room, looking back at yourself. It's, it's, it's hard to describe and it's weird at first, but um, but you'll be aware of both. That's the projected double because your your consciousness has projected a double imprint of itself. Right. Exactly. That is what happened. Exactly. I know what I'm talking about. I ain't just out here, you know, regurgitating what I heard from somebody else. I'm telling you stuff that I've experienced multiple times. And so what happens, though, is. You have to be very disciplined with it. When you start practicing uh, actual projection, you want to when you very first come out, you want to go right back into the body. When you very first come out, you want to go, you want to, yes, success and go right back into the body. Because if you take off and you lose consciousness at any point, you'll forget. You'll forget the whole experience. You have to remain consciously awake and aware throughout the whole, from when you left all the way to when you came back. Because if you lose that awareness, then you're going to forget the whole experience. You can be consciously awake and aware and do all these great things. Talk with the ancestors, meet with the master teachers, get new lessons. And then on the way back, you lose awareness and then you go, you're going to just wake up like feeling real rested. You're going to feel real rested. But you're going to be like, man, it didn't work. <laughs> Cause you ain't going to remember nothing. You go, man, it didn't work. And so you want to, um, so for you, you remember being over the body, but you didn't remember anything after. So it may have been that you stood up over your body. You are where your attention is. So your attention got pulled back to your body, right? So you made it back to your body briefly because of that projected double. Your attention came back, boom, you made it back to your body. And then you projected out again and went off dreaming and forgot the rest of that, right? So that's probably most likely what happened. I wonder if that's what happened because I don't remember anything after. I feel like I woke up. Yeah, that's probably exactly what happened. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, <laughs> I bet it does. What's the purpose of actually doing astral projection? So for me, the biggest purpose, because purpose represents your personal benefit, how you personally benefit from something. And the greatest form of personal benefit for astral projection or lucid dreaming is awareness, increased awareness. 
You know what I mean? Dreams are uh, your ability to, are your greatest tool. Dream interpretation is your greatest tool for self-awareness. That's why I put the dreams, uh, Dream Interpretation Masterclass together to uh, allow you all to have access to knowing what's going on in your inner world, to be able to de decipher and decode exactly what's going on so you can become more aware of what's going on inside of your mind, inside of your emotions. And so the more lucid you are, the more awake you are within that experience, then the more awareness you can have of, of understanding yourself. It, it, in leaps and bounds, you will accelerate quickly. And so astral projection, one, one purpose it has is it allows you to experience for yourself that you are more than just a physical body, right? You are more than just a physical body. So you can have plenty of experiences so that it's because what's an experience? An experience is the difference between believing something and knowing something. So when you have these different experiences, you can know that you are beyond your body. Like, like people talk about, like there's scientists that say, oh, astral projection, that's just um, chemical responses in the brain to create hallucinations. No, me and my friends, when I first learned, me and my friends, one would go into the, another room across the, across the house and place an object. Sometimes it would be one that was never in the house. They never saw. They went to Goodwill real quick and bought it and brought it back. None of us saw it and they put it on there you know I mean? <laughs> on the table and the rest of us were in the room. We close our eyes, do what we had to do, do our breathing, sit there for a minute, get up, walk in there. You know, I'm still sitting, you're still sitting there, but your astral body projects out, walks into the other room, walks all the way across the house, into the other room, looks on the table, sees what's there, walks back, and sits back down in the body. Now, were we successful every time? Fuck no. <laughs> no. But the amount of times that were successful is tremendous. Treme it's It's... Enough experiences to where you know that this isn't no chemicals in the brain. You know what I mean? This is far more than that. And so, like me, there's nothing anybody can tell me otherwise, you know, because I don't believe it. I know it because I've experienced it. So that's one purpose of astral projection is it allows you to know that you are far more than your physical body. And then that alone is going to eliminate a lot of fear because the source of 99% of the fear that people have at the root of it is a fear of dying. At the root of it is a fear of dying. That's why so that's why so many people like funerals are so sad, mainly because it's it makes people face the reality of how strong of a belief it is in their mind that they will eventually die and cease to exist. And because they only identify with their physical body, that endless nothingness that is going to be experienced is so is so striking. Like what? Because it's because it's so far from the truth. That's what is so striking about it. But anyways, anyways, not my dad's beautiful. That's good. Beautiful. But speaking of which, have you had your dad come visit you in a dream? You can do that. You can ask him to come visit and make it happen. You gotta you gotta have a strong relationship with your dreams, though. You gotta start writing them down every day. But uh but yeah, I talk I talk about that, teach that. Um got a video you can find videos on here about it on how to do that. But yeah, that's a beautiful thing as well. But uh, but yeah, so check that out. Uh, yeah, check out the Dream Journal, y'all. It's uh, it's on Amazon right now. First time, just released today. So yeah, go check it out. But anyways, let me get off this and get to something else. Hey, since we talk about astral projection, since we talk about astral projection, boy, <laughs> let's go. Uh, the dream journal. Yeah, the dream journal. Are you talking about the loved one's consciousness? Yes. I'm talking about, you know, they don't have a physical body, but they still have a soul. They still have a spirit. You know what I mean? They still have a subconscious mind. They still have a consciousness. You know what I mean? I can't type that. <laughs> yeah, it's all right, man. I got, I got what you were saying. <laughs> but, um, you know, they still have. An, so, so when you, when you leave your body, your physical body and your consciousness shifts to your astral body and you project out, then, then you can visit with them in the fourth dimension, even after they pass. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Can you see living people? Yes, we can all, all of us can meet up in a dream if we, if we want it. We'd all have to have the ability to do so, but we all could do that. You saying you can decipher my visions? Absolutely. 100%. What are they? Come on. You can, I'm saying you can decipher your visions. Go take the dream. Don't go take the dream interpretation masterclass and learn how to do it for yourself. But until then, or if you don't want to, Show us a picture of the book. Oh, okay, yeah, you just had it. I just had it up. Wait, whoops. Picture of the book. Uh, 
Here go just a straight picture of it. Oh wait, hold on, you ain't gonna be able to see that very well. Yeah, here it is. That's that's just the cover right there. That's just the cover. And then that's the cover and the back cover of it. But yeah. Open to it. Oh, I can't open to it because uh, it literally just published today. Today's the first day it published, so I'm still waiting on my copy even. <laughs> I'm still waiting on my author copy. But yeah, but we got some more books coming and everything on the way. The Lucid book. Everybody been anticipating for a while now. That's on the way. That's going to get here. Um, dreamed I, ste I kept stepping on babies wearing cleats. Wow. Enemies placed them there. I couldn't stop it. So people represent. Um, oh, we had 39,000. I don't know if we're going to hit the 100,000, y'all. We had 40,000. We close. I don't know if we're going to hit the 100,000, though. <laughs> but um, people represent the different aspects within ourselves, our, our own characteristics of our own consciousness, right? So, like, um, like, thank you, thank you, Mind Right. Oh, okay, appreciate it. Appreciate the support. But, um, the oh, somebody put the link in here? Oh, cool. I wonder, uh, yeah, can I put the link in here? I don't know. But anyways, it's on my page. It's on my page, uh, at the top. At the, uh, or, uh, yeah, at the top. It's on my page. The link is there. there. But, uh, Yes, the babies are a part of yourself. So, so let's break down. Let's find well, what are babies. Babies are new humans, right? That are going to end up growing up, ideally, hopefully, and and becoming adults. So, what are adults? Well, people in your life represent the different people in your life will give you insight into different ways of being. My friend Charlie is funny. My friend Phil is serious. My my cousin my cousin Shirley is responsible. My cousin, my cousin Jeremy is irresponsible. You know what I mean? But we all can be responsible, loving, sharing, giving, spiteful, uh, jealous, hurtful, vengeful, hateful. You know what I mean? Uh, prosperous, responsible, communicative. We all can be these different kind of ways, right? But say, but if we want to create something new, like uh, like what's 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 a quality that you want to create within your throw it in the chat, a quality you want to create in yourself that you currently don't have. Everybody, everybody throw in the chat a quality that you want to create in yourself that you don't already have. Discipline. Nice. Nice. Hey, get that keys to success course. Discipline. Hey, if you if you end up winning one, I would suggest the keys to success course. Patience, discipline, peace. Discipline for me too. Beautiful. Beautiful. Good communication. Okay. So you don't have that currently within yourself, right? Fully developed. So you have to create it, right? You have to create it. I want it so bad. Hey, invest in yourself. No, anyways, <laughs> we'll get to that as far as how to make it happen, how to activate the willpower. He says, of course, will teach you, but I don't want to get too far off track. Uh, and that'll take like 20 minutes, what I was about to explain. <laughs> but um, you're, you have to create that within you. So how do you create a person? How do you create a person? How is a person first created? How was a person first created? Let's hear it. How was a person created? How do you create a new person? Anybody know how you create a new person? Actions and thoughts. <laughs> yeah. But a, a man and a woman get together and create a baby, right? Through, through sex, right? That's how a person is created. You know what I mean? Love, yeah, but sometimes love ain't even involved. <laughs> sometimes you don't necessarily need love to create another person. But it is better if uh, that is involved, most definitely, especially for the baby being created. So the conscious mind, remember the conscious mind is masculine. The subconscious mind is feminine. The thoughts within the physical mind, the, phys the conscious mind, implants into the subconscious mind in order to manifest, right? Our thoughts create our reality. This is how our thoughts create our reality. Just like, just like you know, two men, a man, a man and a woman come together to create the number three, the the duality, the inner, the inner self and the outer self, the inner self and the outer self work together to create the aggressive thoughts of the conscious mind 
implant the seed thoughts into the womb of the subconscious mind, right? So they implant all the way up into here. And then the more you think it, the more the more you think it, then the more that it will create more density, more chitta, more mind substance. And the more dense that it becomes, it will fall out and physicalize, right? The more it creates and forms, just like a baby, you continually, you continue to feed it. It's going to continue to form and strengthen and grow until it's ready to be birthed, right? Well, same thing with what you're creating within your mind. You have like you wanting to be disciplined. You're going to think about it for a while first. Like, what would my life be like? This is the gestation period within the subconscious mind before it's actually physicalized. You know, just like you plant a seed into the ground. It great. It gains roots down in the ground before it ever sprouts out of the surface, before it ever physicalizes and sprouts out of the surface. So you're thinking, how can I, man, what would it be like to be more disciplined? How can I become more disciplined? What would my life be like if I did become more disciplined? What would that be like? What could I produce for myself if I was as disciplined as I really want to be? You know, you're thinking about it. And then it's birth. You're finally seeing physical signs. You're taking action and finally seeing physical signs of you, you being more disciplined. Oh, okay, I'm a little, I'm getting, I'm getting disciplined. So babies will represent these developing aspects, these new ideas. Of who we can be. We can be something new and this fresh new idea of who we want to become, right? That's what a baby's gonna represent a new idea, a new idea of who you want to become, more discipline. Oh, I have an idea. I now have an idea of what it's like to be disciplined. I don't really know yet, but I have an idea because I've experienced it just a little bit. The babies, the baby has, but the a baby, you can't just you can't just leave a baby and walk away. I mean, a baby needs all of your attention. You have to nurture it. So this disciplined part of yourself, you have to nurture. Otherwise, it's going to die away and you have to start all over again. You know what I mean? So if you if you start to become disciplined and then you fall away from it, you let your let it escape your attention and don't do it no more, you're going to become undisciplined right back to where you were. And then, but So you have to nurture it, right? So you had a dream where babies, right? What was going on in the dream again? I, I ain't going to be able to scroll all the way back there. <laughs> but babies... Hey, we're almost halfway there, y'all. Almost 50K. We got like uh, 15 or 20, 15 minutes to uh, get to get to 100K. <laughs> but uh, babies will represent these new ideas. I'm stepping on them with, uh, with the cleats. My enemies put them there. Oh, you were stepping on the babies. Okay. With cleats. Wow. So, so shoes will represent your spiritual foundation. And your enemies put them there. Okay. So, so enemies will represent um, unproductive parts of yourself, right? Like um, I played soccer my whole life. Beautiful. So we all, we all have bad, bad habits. Like we all have parts of ourselves that are, we don't like to acknowledge, you know, we don't like to be there that aren't productive, right? What are some of those things? You know, unforgiving. We're uh, spiteful, um, jealous, self-sabotaging. Exactly. But what parts of yourself are at the root of your self-sabotage? What aspects cause that self-sabotage? You know what I mean? Disbelief, dishonesty. You know what I mean? And so those are those are what enemies will represent, will represent those things. The parts of yourself that are not producing anything positive in your life, feeling unworthy. Exactly. Those are your enemies inside of your dreams. The bad guys in your dreams, the things that you're running away from. If you're scared, whoever had a running dream, you know, what I mean? throw put run in the chat. If you ever had a running dream where you was running from somebody or running from something or being chased, you know, what I mean, that's you not wanting to face it. Exactly. Your own demons, your own demons, you have to face and address and destroy. Run slow. Exactly. I can get into that. Exactly. So. That's what your enemies represent. So there's probably some some way in which, um, you know, whenever you had this dream. So self, you said self-sabotaging. So maybe there was some new way you started self-sabotaging, you know, talking down on yourself, being negative, um, not believing in yourself or something. And there was a, something new that was developing there because the more you do that, the more you're going to become that. And the more you're going to become that in more and more ways. And so there's something new there because your enemies put it there, but you were stomping it with your cleats and feet and shoes represent, represent, um, your spiritual foundation, right? 
What is your spiritual foundation? Your spiritual foundation is your spiritual beliefs, your spiritual disciplines and practices and exercises, you know, like meditation, dream interpretation, contemplation, um, visualization, uh, breath work, you know, things like that. If you have a regular exercise of any of that stuff. And so that is destroying what what this self sabotaging is starting to produce. So you're so you're having so whatever whenever you have this dream, whatever you've been doing or whatever new beliefs that you are creating for yourself, it is it is helping you to take action to destroy what this self sabotaging part of yourself is producing. So keep it up, and you keep it up long enough, you're gonna be in there with with a machine gun taking out the enemies, <laughs> taking them out. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. So yes, yeah, so so definitely stick with it. Definitely. Hey, if we hit if we hit fifty thousand, I'll give it to one more person. But yeah, I don't think we're hitting a uh, hundred thousand. We'll just we'll just say if we hit fifty thousand, we'll give it to one more person. Uh, cause cause we I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta get ready to leave for this soccer game. And I didn't even finish this email, man. Look at this. Ain't this a mess? <laughs> Here we go. Boom, I'm finishing it now. <laughs> what does water and bridges mean? Water represents life experiences. Hell yeah, I'm with it. Thank you. You're very welcome. Water represents life experiences. All right. Water represents life experiences. Oh, hold on, let's see. There we go. Water represents life experiences. And uh, bridges are connecting one place to another, right? And places in dreams represent your state of mind. So a bridge is your ability to remain on top of your life experiences and shift from one state of mind to another. So like, like when you get off work and, and you're in a product at work, you're in a productive state of mind. But when you get off, you need to let that go, right? And just kind of a relax and get to a relaxed state of mind. So a bridge is going to represent your ability to move from one state of mind to another, from that productive state of mind to a relaxed state of mind. You know what I mean? When you get home and you got to turn into mom or you got to turn into dad, you know, an authoritative state. So you got to go from relaxed state of mind in the car ride to an authoritative state of mind with the family, right? And then from there, you know, you're going out to see or hang out with your friends. So then you go from a authoritative state of mind into, uh, thank you into a, um, a a festive state of mind, right? So you have to shift in those ways. And so that bridge is going to represent that shift. Snake, what is a snake dream meaning? A snakes, so all animals are habitual creatures. So so they will represent habitual ways we use our mind. You know, thought ways that we think in patterns that we we've done we've done that pattern of thinking so often that we don't even have to choose to do it. It's just habitual. But a snake is different. Um, snakes, horses are different. Horses will represent your willpower. Birds will represent subconscious uh, habitual thoughts. Um, dragons will represent the ego. Fish will represent spiritual knowledge. Um, but snakes will represent your creative energy, your kundalini. You know what I mean? Your kundalini is your creative energy. So snakes will represent your creative energy. So whenever, so in, in so a lot of times people have dreams where they're afraid of the snakes. So they're afraid of their own creative power. You know what I mean? They have victim consciousness. They're afraid of their own creative power. I created this disease, but I, 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 wait, what? I created my own diseases. I created my own ailments. What? No. I mean, now that they're afraid of that. But if you do take that and honor that, then there's freedom with that. Because if I created the ailment, then that means I can create the remedy. Two more thousand. Two more thousand. Let's see if we can hit it, man. Two more thousand. Let's see if we can hit it. Let's go. Let's grow. As I always say. Let's grow. Let's grow. All right. All right. I think I'm ready to go. I think it's good to go. Oops. One more change. Replace. Yes, I got you. Thank you, bro. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Appreciate all the follows and likes and all the uh, all that good stuff. I appreciate it, y'all. Man, this is running it up, man. Y'all running it up. <laughs> Wait, what happens if we hit 50,000? If we hit 50,000, 
Well, I said it was just one person. I said five people if we hit a hundred thousand, but we but we didn't. So we hit fifty thousand. So one more person, one more person gonna get uh gonna get the um uh, uh, free access to one of the courses. So you have the Dream Interpretation Masterclass. You have the um, Keys to Success course, which is gonna teach you how to strengthen your concentration and willpower. Uh, the Dream Interpretation Masterclass is gonna teach you how to understand this to the fullest degree, as well as what dreams are, how to interpret dreams. And you also have the life force uh, energy, life force energy and chakras, which will teach you about uh, your, outer, your source of life force outside of yourself, the source of life force within yourself in the superconscious mind and uh, your chakras, the seven chakras, the major minor chakras, like your hand chakras. And we'll teach about how to open your hand chakras, how to use your hand chakras to heal yourself and other people, um, primarily yourself, though. I, I don't I don't me. I personally I don't ever suggest healing other people, but a lot of people are into it. A lot of people do it. You know, to each their own. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I do it sometimes for some people, you know, but I also make sure to also talk to them and teach them how to, you know, permanently make it permanent. But anyways, also in their minor chakras and things and uh, how to how to use that. And this it's not just like like if you go Google chakras, or if you go to Barnes and Noble, get a book on chakras, you know, it's it's ancient knowledge. Like It's real shit, real deep shit. Stuff you ain't gonna find other places. You know, we get into like the the um, ductless glands, the endocrine system, and how those correlate with each one, and um, what the chakras look like on the etherical level, which you probably never have seen. <laughs> you only see the the um, the deeper level uh, um, images of what the chakras look like. So we'll get into a lot of that. How do we chosen for the free course? The courses aren't free, but um, but I'm about to give a free course to somebody. <laughs> So everybody start throwing them threes in the chat. You know how this goes. Throw the threes in the chat. And I'm going I'm to at random soccer game. Yeah, I got a soccer game to go to. I'm going to at random clicks on somebody, one of these threes. I'm going to at random click on. And that person is going to win uh, free access to one of the courses. All right. So uh, let's, I'm going to count down. I'm going to count down from 333. Not playing. <laughs> Not playing. And we're going to do it in a three. Two, one. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me make sure my fingers up. Three, two, one. This person. Kika B. Uzumaki. Okay. Kika B. Uzumaki. You got it. Hey, keep throwing them threes up. I'm going to give it to three people. Fuck it. I'm going to give it to three people. Biza Umamaki. Biza Umamaki. Hold on. Let me take a screenshot of that. Keep throwing them threes in there, y'all. I'm going to give it away to two more people. Two more people. So, Biza Umayaki, U Uzumaki, hit me in the, go, go to my page and go to the top uh, of my page, check out all of the courses available, and then DM me, I followed you, and then DM me, and let me know, um, wait, did I follow you, let me make sure, and let me know, um, oops, and let me let me know which one. Yeah, I did. Okay. And let me know which one of those courses you want. So hit keep it in threes. We're gonna do another one. Second person. In three, two, one. Boom. The real B. The green bean alien. Okay. The green bean alien. Let's go. The green bean alien. I just followed you. Let's uh let's save that so we know who all who all I'm getting this to. Okay. The green bean alien. One more person, y'all. One more person, but then threes in there. One more person in three, two, one. Bing. Who is it? Who is it? Uh-oh. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Keep hitting it because it, it didn't hit it. Who is it? Canvas. Canvas is brand new, man. They got two followers, man. Y'all go help. Go follow Canvas. Oh, oh, I'm trying to send you a follow. It won't let me, but Canvas. Also, I'm going to screenshot it. You, uh, you as well. Go uh, go to my page. I appreciate it, everybody. Go to my page. Go to the top. Click on it and uh, check out the different ones in there. And then um, go and go and let me know. DM me, hit me a DM and let me know, and I'll give you the uh, give you the free access to it, to whichever course you want. But yeah, I appreciate it, y'all. Everybody else, man, you can use TikTok. The promo code TikTok. All y'all got fifty percent off. Boom. TikTok is a discount code. Exactly. TikTok is a discount code to all the courses. So all y'all. Because because I, I I feel like I gotta give something to everybody, man. Because everybody throwing them threes in there, everybody got it to fifty k. Not just 
10 people. You know I mean, we only got 77 people in here and we got the 50K, man. You know how many people I scroll through and I see, I see, uh, you know, they got 2,000 people in there and they only got like 8,000 likes. <laughs> but even, even when I don't do this, I don't ever get a 50K, but I, we usually get, get up to like 15, 20,000. <laughs> how can work with my heart chakra? Okay. Real quick before I go, last thing. Working with your heart chakra, breathe through your heart center. Put your attention there. You know what I mean? Put your attention there. So now when you're breathing, oxygen is coming through your nose, right? And into your lungs. But use your imagination because energy moves off of intention. So all you need is your imagination. You don't even have to feel it or perceive it, right? So put your attention on your heart. And you, with your imagination, see energy around yourself because it's there. The vitality globules are there. You know, you can, you can, on a clear blue sky, look at the sky and stare at it long enough, you'll start seeing the energy floating in the air. I'm telling you, do it. Don't believe me. Find out for yourself if that's true or if I'm bullshitting you again. <laughs> but so you don't have, so you don't have to be able to see it. But with your imagination, imagine with every inhale, energy entering into your heart. And then with every exhale, the energy leaving out every inhale, and entering in, and then every exhale, and leaving out. Every inhale, and entering in, and every exhale, and leaving out. And do that for as, as much as you can remember throughout the day, and do it all day long if you can. As much of the day as you can do it, do it. And with one last thing, man, I'm telling y'all, man, if, if not for yourself, hey, this is, I never ask for nothing from nobody, man. But I would love it if everybody would go get a copy of the Dream Journal and tell like four or five people about it. Because that would be amazing, man. That would be amazing. So, yeah, it's on Amazon. You can find it in my, uh, in my link in my bio. Go get the book. It'll help me out so much uh, just because with the algorithm and everything. And, and so then because if we can get it because it just dropped today. So if we can get a lot of momentum with it early on, then Amazon's algorithm will pick it up and then they'll start promoting it for us. You know, so then because so if we do this up front, then we can have an ability to help a lot of people. Because I'm telling you, man, how, how many people put, put a uh, put a G in the chat if you've ever went to went to Google to try to find out what your dream means and was more confused than, be, than before you started the Google search? Let me know. Put a G in there and let me know. Yeah, exactly. So people get so low. I remember me. I used to, man, I used to want to know what my dreams meant so bad. So bad. I knew there was something to them. It had to be more. They was too epic. Some of them was more real than real life. I knew it had to be more, but I never found. And when I finally did find somewhere to tell me exact 100% accuracy and clarity, like this person I just met 20 minutes ago told me exactly what my dream meant and broke down to me everything going on in the last three, four days for me. Didn't never met them. And, I, and now I've had that experience on the other end thousands of times. Meet a random person or somebody, hey, my friend told me to hit you up, ask about my dream. Okay, it means this. Oh my God, how you know so much about me? I don't. I just know this language. And I'm just translating the message from your inner self. So your soul knows everything about you. And I'm just translating the message. So if we kick off this algorithm right here, then that will really help um, kick off every, you know, for other people and, and help other people really grow. Um, and really get, get to know themselves because dream interpretation truly is your number one tool for self-awareness, truly, not even close. <laughs> so, so, all right, I'm out of here, y'all, man. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, you know, invest in yourself. Anything, anything that you get from me is, is going to quadruple what you get in yourself. And if you, if you have trouble with funds on any of this, with any money, then go check out, um, the, uh, the hundred buck challenge, the hundred buck challenge on my page. Uh, so you can get a hundred dollars for yourself. You know, do that, do that exercise twice, and in one month you'll have a hundred dollars for the course and a hundred dollars for yourself. You know what I mean? And if you need help, hit me up, and I'll help. I'll help you along. I don't. I'm not shy. You know what I mean, I'm more than willing to help anybody anytime that I have spare time. But yeah, all right, I'll holler at y'all. Or if you really want to get help, become a mentee. You know what I mean? <laughs> become a mentee. All right, but I'll holler at y'all. Peace, peace, peace.